Welcome back, I'm Kim Bailey, and this is Floral Art Online, the Designs Dissected series, where we have our AI design eye look at a couple of designs and give us an analysis based on the principles and elements of design, as well as some suggestions for improvement in terms of the interpretation of that particular class title. This week we have two designs. The first is a contemporary Christmas design, and the second was the title of Wool and Wheat. So let's look first of all at the contemporary Christmas design. Uh, contemporary designs can sometimes cause some confusion in terms of the difference between a contemporary and a modern design. So for most competitions, a modern design will be defined as a design from the 60s, 70s, 80s. And a contemporary design is a design that uses techniques or plant material or something that is of today. So it's very much more what is happening in the floral world at this point in time. So my interpretation here was to use one of the very large glass uh, goblets and make it something of a feature. The, the problem with glass, using glass often, is that it's so reflective and so uh, can be so shiny that it, it detracts from the plant material and the floral arrangement. So you have to be fairly careful using glass that you don't get blinded by it, I guess is the best way to put it. So you have to mask it somehow so it doesn't dominate the design. So what I've done here is used a base across the top of the glass. I've used a, a base of, of twigs and sticks and branches and tied them together. Then I've put some water sources inside that for the plant material. So it's kangaroo paw and some uh, woolly bush and a little bit of a large monsteria leaf just to, to give it a, a good base of foliage. I've extended the, the plant material out along where the branches are and I've incorporated the baubles so as they're not too dominant once again. So inside of the glass and I've got some banksia cones, some bleached banksia cones inside there as well as in the um, design or the top part of the design itself. And I've got some of the baubles hanging down off the branches to give it a little bit of movement outside of the container. Now this design... I was very happy with because I struggle with the contemporary stuff. I'm, I'm just not comfortable with a lot of the fuss that comes around the, the contemporary styles at the moment. I much prefer to have clean lines, as you will have seen with a lot of my designs. So this is a challenge for me to do something like this. I was happy with it. it the design itself is placed on a, a Christmas placemat as the base to keep it to lift it above the bench. And this design was the reserve champion of this particular show, so I did get some reward for the effort that I put in into planning it. So let's now give it to Design Eye and see what it has got to say when it analyzes the design. Looking at line, first of all, the use of branches creates strong dynamic lines that extend horizontally. These lines guide the viewer's eye across the arrangement and add a sense of movement. And that's very important because it is hard to get a horizontal line in a design that doesn't cut off the design. So I'm very happy that I managed to get some movement through these branches and the placement of these branches. Uh, for shape, the spherical shape of the baubles contrasts with the irregular organic shapes of the branches and foliage, adding visual interest. So that's good that the, the shape of the baubles is reflected somewhat in the shape of the glass as well and so we get that repetition without it being too obvious and then the both of those elements are the non-plant material elements and so all of the plant material contrasts with that because it's all very organic shape so between the branches and the kangaroo paw and the foliage and the pine cones uh, banksia cones I should say the design is three-dimensional, utilising the glass vase to create depth. The arrangement of materials both inside and outside the vase adds to the form's complexity. So that, once again, is about me thinking about the finished visual impact of the design and that had I not put anything inside the, 
glass vase, it would have been this big empty space and, and because it was glass, your eye would have been drawn to it all the time. There was a mix of textures from the roughness of the branches and pine cones, or banksia cones, to the smooth glossy surface of the baubles and the soft feathery texture of the greenery. <coughs> so that's a, once again an important consideration when you've got those very smooth and shiny surfaces that you have enough mix of texture to provide some contrast against those surfaces. The colour palette features the traditional Christmas colours green and gold. The green foliage and baubles are complemented by the golden baubles and yellow flowers creating a festive look. So that's good. And I did in fact choose those colours rather than have a mix of Christmas colours because I thought in a, in a contemporary sense, we often see these days that Christmas decorations tend to go through one or two colours in, in the, um, what is offered in terms of Christmas decorations rather than the mass of all of the different colours. The design uses both positive and negative space effectively. The branches and foliage occupy the upper space, while the baubles fill the glass vase, creating a balanced composition. So we've got some negative space in between where the baubles are hanging down and the balls inside of the glass bars and there's negative space between the branch that's going out towards the back of the design and the rest of the bulk of the design. The design is asymmetrically balanced with the weight of the branches and the foliage counterbalanced by the balls in the vase. The horizontal extension of the branches is balanced by the vertical presence of the vase. So once again we're looking at that, filling that space so you can see actually in the image the lines on the bench where I had to use the space and I've used about two-thirds of the space which is good but we want to have some sort of balance between vertical and horizontal placements particularly because that top placement is very strongly horizontal so I have to balance that with something that that creates the vertical in our mind's eye the vertical balance to that strong horizontal line. There is strong contrast between the natural elements, the branches, foliage and, and banksia cones, and the artificial shiny baubles. This contrast enhances the visual appeal of the arrangement. So I, I talked about contrast a little bit earlier and it comes into texture and it comes into um, the colour palette as well, but I think mostly in this one the contrast is in the textures. The ball will serve as focal points, drawing the viewer's eye with their bright colours and reflective surfaces. The arrangement of the branches and foliage supports this emphasis. Now that, to me, is a bit of a worry, because really in a floral art design, the emphasis should be on the plant material. So a focal point should be the plant material, not something that is non-plant material. So I think that in that sense, had I been judging it, um, it would have lost a couple of marks, because... They are the balls most definitely are what draws your eye first there, and so I should have done something to lessen that impact and made the top design, the horizontal design, more of the focal point. Rhythm is created through the repetition of the green and gold baubles and the consistent use of branches and foliage. This repetition guides the viewer's eye around the design, and that's very true. And I was very conscious that I wanted that the reflection of the movement to give me some rhythm in the design and so once again it's why I chose just those two colours to incorporate into the design. The design feels cohesive due to the consistent colour scheme and the harmonious integration of natural and festive elements. The glass vase ties the design together providing a unifying base. <laughs> once again if you get that um, rhythm and movement right then you're going to get the unity of the design right as well. The proportions are generally well considered, with the height of the branches balanced by the size of the vase. However, the overall height could be increased for greater impact. And that's probably true. It's almost like it's a square. And so we, what we want is something that emphasises a little bit more of the, the height or I should have got, had I got used a smaller vase, I could have gone wider. So we're looking at that um, 358 dimensions and just making sure that the elements that we've got within a design fit into that. So in this case, you know, if we looked at 8 being the height 
five being the width and three being the depth. It doesn't really work. The proportions are not quite there. And if you you'd mixed and matched those around a bit and say made that eight was the width and five was the height, even that doesn't work well. So I need to look a little bit more at the proportions in this particular design. So let's have a look at some of the suggestions that uh, Design Eye has given us to achieve a greater sense of balance, depth and visual interest, which would enhance its festive and modern qualities. So first of all, enhance the vertical lines. Consider adding some vertical elements such as taller branches or elongated foliage, such as holly or eucalyptus, to increase the height and add more dynamic movement. So as you can see with the branch that goes out towards the back, that gives me a little bit of height. And had I emphasised that a bit more, had another branch coming out that way, or had, as it says, some eucalyptus or some holly coming out that way, it would have implied a greater height and would have added that vertical line to it a bit more. Increase colour variation. Introduce a few more colours to add depth and interest. For example, incorporating some red poinsettias or white lilies could enhance the festive feel and provide more contrast. So that's probably true, and, and what I think I would do is put the poinsettia inside the vase so that there was some... It, what it would do is bring the focal point towards that red poinsettia because of the size it is, and perhaps have um, something small, so maybe a couple of red baubles in the top of the design so that the colour is repeated without it being detracting from the rest of the design. Strengthen the focal point. While the baubles are a good focal point, adding a few unique or larger baubles or incorporating a central standout piece such as a Christmas star could make the focal point even more striking. And that's a very good suggestion. Once again, I could probably put that inside the vase to make the focal point you're looking into the design rather than anything that's on top or around the design. And in terms of a Christmas star, you could make it out of plant material and there's lots of ways that you can manipulate foliage into shapes and things and so that's something that I would consider next time I was thinking about doing it. Refine the base. The base of the arrangement can be refined for a cleaner look. Using a decorative cloth or a more elegant base could enhance the overall presentation and I can see now that that's very true that base is detracts quite a lot from the design. Had I used just a plain gold base to reflect the colours that there or a plain green base it would have been much better. But that um, the white base with the um, holly and, and red berries on it, um, it just doesn't look right. It's, it's one thing that takes away from the rest of the design. So if you put your hand over the design and look at the design without the base, it's a much more pleasing design to my eye anyway. So let's now move on to our second design which is wool and wheat. Here we have wool and wheat. This was uh, on the bench, obviously, and it was at a, a competition where there was no differentiation between the benches, so the, the image is a little bit difficult to look at because you can see all of the designs that are behind it on the, the next bench along. What I determined with this design was that I wanted to stretch the interpretation as I do as you know by not making it obviously wool and wheat but extending the idea of wool and of wheat so what I've used there is pasta so it's wholemeal pasta in in different shapes and, and sizes and then I have used what is commonly called in this country woolly bush um, it's an Australian native and it does have a very woolly feel that's the foliage the green part of it the shapes on the uh, candlesticks are made from uh, ring tapestry rings that are wrapped in wool and then they've been dipped in a wheat paste, a wholemeal wheat paste, to give them that little bit of extra colour. So the design placed second and the judge said at the time that she was a bit perplexed when she first looked at it because she couldn't work out where the wheat was until she looked at it a bit more closely and realised what I'd done and, and was quite impressed by the interpretation. So that worked well for me on this occasion. So let's see now what Design Eye has got to say about this design. 
Looking at line first of all, the design incorporates vertical and horizontal lines created by the wheat stems and the twine wrap structures. The lines add a sense of direction and movement and that obviously comes from the way that I have wrapped the wool and the twine through the circles so that it gives you, your eye just tends to follow those lines moving through those circles and then it's reflected in the placement of the pasta and the wheat underneath and through the base of the, de the design. The circular shapes made from twine are prominent and serve as a central focus. These geometric shapes contrast with the organic forms of the foliage. So that's the woolly bush that's in the back there. And it's a very different sort of foliage and I have quite a reputation for using it because it adds such a different dimension to my designs and we grow it and so I've always got good access to it as well. Looking at form, <coughs> the arrangement is three-dimensional with the circular shapes and vertical elements providing depth and interest. So here I've got some quite high vertical placements of the woolly bush that extend beyond the circles but the circles and the way I've got the pasta hanging off the sides of the circles gives you that sense of movement and a change in form so it's a combination of the, the circular form as well as the, the vertical form as, as it's said. There's a rich variety of textures including the roughness of the twine, the softness of the wool and the natural texture of the wheat and foliage. These textural contrasts add visual and tactile interest. Once again as we looked at in the, the first design texture and the contrast in textures is going to give your designs a sense of life and a sense of interest and movement for in a lot of cases the color palette is predominantly neutral with the beige of the wool and twine contrasting with the green of the foliage and the golden tones of the wheat this natural color scheme gives the design an earthy feel and that's very much what i was looking for i can't imagine other than using a different coloured wool, whether uh, how you would introduce colour in terms of the that the title being wool and wheat, and if you use different coloured wool, you run the risk of that dominating the design, and because it's not a plant-based product, you don't get as much recognition for incorporating that into the design as you do with the plant-based material, because for all of our designs, plant material must predominate. So space, the design effectively uses negative space with the open areas within the circular shapes and between the elements adding to the overall composition. This use of space prevents the design from feeling cluttered. So that, that open area and giving the design some movement and some structure but, but leaving the space as part of the design. And this is what I talked about in one of the earlier videos is that within your designs there's always space between things that forms part of the design. So you couldn't imagine that this design would be just considered the design without the space between those uh, wrappings in the circular form. So always our negative space is part of the design itself, the overall design. The design appears asymmetrically balanced. The two twine circles of different sizes create a sense of balance without being mirror images. The vertical elements add stability. So the balance is there. It is two stands and I made a conscious effort to have one lower than the other and one placed slightly behind the other but not, as it says, so that they were mirror images. They are slightly different in the way they've been wrapped and the way they have the placements of the other plant material around them. Contrast is evident in the use of the different textures, wool, twine, wheat and foliage, and in the mix of organic and geometric forms. This contrast enhances the visual appeal. So once again, it's about contrasting not just the textures, but about the shapes and the forms as well. <coughs> the twine circles serve as the focal point due to their size, shape and position. They immediately draw the viewer's eye while the other elements support this emphasis. And I get away with it in this design because <coughs> of the wheat paste that I've used on them. And so it, it is still a plant-based interpretation in terms of those the areas of the focal points of the emphasis. Rhythm is achieved through the repetition of similar materials and shapes. 
the consistent use of twine and the arrangement of wheat stems and foliage create a visual flow. So once again, whilst it's not mirror images, there is rhythm and repetition in the design enough that you feel like it's a complete whole. The design feels cohesive due to the consistent use of natural materials and a harmonious colour palette. The repetition of shapes and textures also contributes to unity. So unity and rhythm are often intertwined <laughs> as so to speak, because you need that rhythm to move your eye through the design and to make it pleasing to the eye. And that will then, in turn, create some unity because, it, as it says, it makes the design feel cohesive. The proportions of the elements are well considered. The size of the twine circles in relation to the height of the wheat stems and the foliage creates a balanced and pleasing composition. I think I probably could have gone a little bit taller and I think that one of the circles should have been obviously larger than the other. I'm not as happy with the proportions, the relative proportions in this design as I should be given that it's a finished one. So let's now see what we've got as suggestions so that the design can achieve an even greater sense of balance, depth and visual interest, enhancing its natural and rustic qualities. So first of all, increase variation in height. <laughs> Adding more variation in height of the vertical elements would, could create a more dynamic design. Taller stems of wheat could add visual interest and enhance the sense of movement. And I think that's very true. I think what I've missed out on is having just the plain stems of wheat and that could have come up higher than the woolly bush on both of those, at the back of both of those circles and created a a higher point, it still will repeat the colour and it still would balance with the other vertical lines that are there, but they would be vertical lines in the middle of the design rather than at the sides, and so I think that's a very valid uh, suggestion, as is the my feeling about the proportions that I mentioned earlier. Add a pop of colour. Introducing a subtle pop of colour, such as baby's breath or lavender, could add depth and draw more attention to the design. This could enhance the contrast and emphasis. This is a very interesting suggestion. It's not something that I would have considered because my thinking all along was that I had to keep it within the wheat colours and then I had the foliage as the contrasting colour. But had I put in a little bit of baby's breath, um, don't know. I don't know. I'd have to try it out to see. I'm, I'm just... Introducing white in a design I, I veer away from because I find that it does, for me, it just draws my eye too much to that white colour rather than the rest of the design. So that's something I'd certainly consider, but I'd really have to experiment with it to see that it settled into what I wanted to do as the interpretation of that class title. Enhance the base. The base of the arrangement could be more refined. Using a more decorative or contrasting base could elevate the overall presentation and make the design feel more complete. Now, I apologise for my voice, it's just about going, but if we look at this comment, I think this is a very valid suggestion. I'm not happy with the way the bases were. I think I covered the bases with wool uh, in the hope that it would create some uh, repetition of the, the wool that is used in, around the circles but it's too much it's too solid uh, an environment and I've tried to cover it up with some of the wheat and some of the pasta but it still doesn't work so I do need to work on having a better base for this design that is there the also, also the problem with the base is that it's two separate placements and they're not on a baseboard so they're both on the bench and it doesn't it runs the risk of not feeling like it's incorporated into one design when I haven't got something underneath the two placements that gives it that sense of, of unity and, and belonging to one another. Improve the stability. Ensuring that all elements are securely fastened and stable is crucial. If any components appear wobbly or unsteady, they can detract from the design's impact. Now, I found this a fascinating um, comment from our AI all it looks at is this image so I don't know what it thought looked to be unstable unless it is the way that the 
uh, pasta and, and wheat placements across the base looked like they might be falling out. So what I probably needed to do, as we looked at the comment before, is improve that base area so it doesn't give you that feeling that it, it might be a little bit unstable. And it might look like that those pasta stalks and the wheat stalks are actually falling or are spinning around a little bit. So an interesting interpretation and some good suggestions for both our designs. That's our two designs for this week. The Contemporary Christmas Arrangement and Wool and Wheat. I encourage you to submit your own designs to AI. You just need to go to the website, upload an image, and within about, um, say, two hours, you'll have the results back. I also reassure you that all of the analyses are supervised by a human, so someone from our team will look at the results and make sure that they will make sense to you and they are always available to talk about what you've got in your analysis as well. So that's our lot for this week. Join me again next time. For now, I'm Kim Bailey and this is Floral Art Online, the Designs Dissected series.